Israel Adesanya just literally cost the UFC a whole lot of money. Now, I want you to imagine a world where you're Dana White and you literally now have to explain to the shareholders of the UFC that one of your biggest stars in the world, Israel Adesanya, a guy who has swagger, a guy who can dance, a guy who understands the hip hop American culture and comes from a very exotic place like New Zealand, but has a Nigerian background. All these cultural mashing that you can add into the repertoire of Israel Adesanya's marketing. All of that now gone with having a champion that is a Nazi. Okay, now I know that sounds harsh to say, I understand that Sean Strickland has redeemed himself from his old ways, came up with having black training partners, other minorities that train with him and help him in his preparation for his up and coming matchups leading all the way to the championships. I understand that's not fully the case. The problem is Sean Strickland still says a lot of racially inflammatory things that, let's just be honest, a lot of right-wing, working-class white guys can relate to. Let's just call it what it is. And the problem is, when you have a company like Disney, that is a serious problem to deal with as a company. So now, what do you do? Because Israel Adesanya came into this fight expecting a tune-up. The executives of Disney, the UFC, Zufa, the Endeavor management group in LA that is affiliated and owns the UFC, they were all expecting a tune-up fight in Strawn Strickland. That's not what they got. What they got was a very horrible stylistic matchup, <coughs> which by the way, is a reality in mixed martial arts on any given day. On any given day, anybody can beat anyone around the world and in any gym. In any gym around the world where there's sparring going on, there's championship level guys that are getting beat, and then there's guys that are current world champions getting their hands uh, put on by somebody who is lesser than them in the rankings, and they are world champion, getting their butts whooped. With the likes of Mike Tyson mentioning this, and by the way, this is the reason why Vince McMahon said that he never wanted to buy or somehow invest in mixed martial arts when he had the chance to do it. And the reason why is because you cannot build stars in mixed martial arts. And primarily, that is the reason why a lot of guys have these problems with fighter pay. Because the reality is that it's not that the company doesn't want to pay you any more money or anything like that. The reality of the situation is that the company just can't afford it or justify the salary that they're going to give you with your lack of contribution to the sales or the uh, pay-per-views or the merchandising that deals with the company. So that is their justification behind all that. And unfortunately, sometimes they can be right about that. So that's the unfortunate thing about fight or pay that you have to understand. So now, Sean Strickland is the world champion. Is he a popular champion? Well, to be honest with you, I think he's very popular among the hardcore MMA community. And I think that alone projects a different level of view as opposed to what is in the outside world, the mainstream world. Because I always emphasize and tell you guys, what you have and what you got going on in the MMA world will not always translate directly into the mainstream world. So just because, let's say, a group of people support Sean Strickland, it doesn't mean that he's going to make Conor McGregor numbers. Israel Adesanya already has been proven to be a star over and over again. And then there were times where, let's say he didn't have the highest pay-per-view numbers, it tanked because maybe he didn't have the right opponent, maybe he didn't have the right 
promotion leading up into the fight or just the right amount of hype or uh, interest that he created uh, leading up to those particular fights. But nonetheless, he is still a star. And on top of that, the way that Sean Strickland describes him in the Nelk Boy, uh, uh, yeah, the Nelk Boys podcast is that he somehow fits a certain agenda. So how symbolic that he wants, he goes into this fight, wins against a guy that has these contrasting values that he does. Look at Izzy. He's got his nails painted. He wears pearls and he's a male. He does a lot of things that are quintessentially contrasting to the ideas of, let's say, traditional masculinity. And then here comes Sean Strickland, who fills all those roles in his current moment of time and in his current stage of, let's say, his persona that he has, right, in comparison to, let's say, his past persona as a former neo-Nazi of a Los Angeles skinhead uh, gang member, right? All these things are bad news. So even though he's not really a Nazi, that's not the view of the world that is around him. That is not the view of, let's say, the average fans. They just hear that one time and they're going to run with it. And then on top of that, this is not something that Sean vehemently uh, denies by any stretch of the imagination. You got guys out there that are former gang members, guys that have been part of terrorist organizations, people that have done horrible things, uh, crimes against humanity, whether they were part of a government, a gang, or a rebel group, or any of that sort. A lot of these people, they will deny that they are part of any of these groups. You ask Sean Strickland, straight up he'll tell you, yup, I'm part of that. I was this guy. But because of that, it was because of this redemption story that I rose above it. I started hanging out with more minorities. I started becoming more of uh, a diverse kind of guy. I started having different friends, so on and so forth. Now I'm the new Sean Strickland. This is my new persona or this and that. Yes, this is all true. This is all a reality of what Sean Strickland has going on. But what he also has going on, unfortunately, are these other things that haunt his past. And this is the reason why the UFC and Dana White did not want him to win. They looked at it as a tune-up fight. Because let's face it, what was the big fight in the horizon? Do you guys remember the summer of 2023? One of the greatest summers of mixed martial arts and probably even one of the best summers of my life. And part of that was because of the mixed martial arts that had uh, gone on. And then the other experience that I've had uh, traveling up and down uh, California multiple times uh, within a span of a month. But neither here or there. The point of the matter is, during that time of summer of 2023, you had UFC 290. Drickus Duplessis does what? He commits a serious upset in the same similar fashion that you get an upset with the likes of... Right now, Sean Strickland taking on Israel Adesanya, defeating him. Five-round decision, okay? Nobody expected that, just like Drickus Duplessis. So then he wins. They have this storyline going on with Israel Adesanya about who is the real African. And then, of course, it's tied into the South African apartheid uh, history and being that Drickus Duplessis is the ancestral uh, inheritance of the people that may have colonized that land here he is israel adesanya goes up in the octagon after his win calls him the n-word multiple times and then drick is duplessis only replies with yeah i may be african but you're not my brother and this and that it was great it was an absolute masterpiece of promotion that's supposed to lead to the next fight you could have led it all the way to let's say november right and then it never had happened so because of that now, Israel wanted to continue on his active streak that he had going on. He's a very active fighter, right? Constantly fighting month after month and year after year. Of course, he's had 80 to 90 kickboxing fights, over 100, almost 200 some odd combat sports events in his entire career. So he's a very experienced man, just like Sean Strickland is a very experienced man in ways that's not counted. He constantly goes and fights in the gyms. And guess what? He's constantly honed in. 
He's got his sights literally um, set up to uh, its battle uh, site. It's, uh, it's battle zone. And its sense of alertness is constantly there. So he's he's just ready. He was at the right place at the right time. And an Izzy was just way too active and perhaps maybe a little too tired from all these training camps that he had done. Maybe he had stretched himself out a little bit too thin. But nonetheless, one of the things that I have to really tell you in this video and that I have to emphasize is really the UFC and its investors and uh, business partners do not like this. But that's the beauty of combat sports. You can't control it. However, they are still a business. But at the same time, you can't control the results of the competition. Because even though we wanted to live in this main character syndrome world of Israel Adesanya being the hero and then fighting the South African colonizer, just like real mixed martial arts and the results that happen into it, it doesn't work out like that. Just like life, a lot of things don't work out the way that you want them to. You try to negotiate a certain deal, you don't get it. You try and make out a certain amount of uh, let's say leverage to your side. It doesn't always happen. Maybe you want a little bit more, but then you got a little bit less from the negotiation deal that you had. Maybe you wanted a job that, let's say, described as doing something like this or doing something in the executive level. And then you get hit with, let's say, being an associate of some sort rather than, let's say, the top dog of the company. Okay, you wanted to be world champion or the gold medalist in the Olympics, but instead you ended up getting the bronze. That's okay. You can use that and catapult yourself into becoming the greatest boxer of all time, which is what Floyd Mayweather did. He lost in the amateurs, but he never lost in the pros, and he learned from that lesson. So that is the reality of combat. Your heroes aren't always going to win. And Sean Strickland, unfortunately, is the biggest anti-hero that I think you can really understand that is existing today in mixed martial arts. Again, I go at it over and over again. He was a former Nazi. He says all these things that are not desirable in the modern feminist world. And yes, those are some aspects that I may agree with on terms of what Sean Strickland uh, views in the world. But in all honesty, I'm going to tell you guys, I don't like Sean Strickland's views on Islam. And if you want me to dissect and explain to you why, here it is. He's mentioned in the Nelk Boys that in Islam, we indoctrinate women into wearing a hijab. And he says that it's BS, that yeah, it's their choice, it's not, or this and that. Here's the thing that Sean Strickland has to understand. He's looking at a world from a very deducted view in terms of the way that he only sees fit as to what he believes is morale. Now, the Western morale is be nice to everybody, treat everybody how you want to be treated. Yes, the golden rule. But then with Islam, there are certain things that are a little more complicated than that. For example, yes, there's a lot of things that we don't believe in, such as free mixing. Okay, we understand that in modern society, there are men and women that work side by side in all different professions. That's fine. But it doesn't mean that we have to choose to be in these types of careers that is not in line with our religion. And we have the choice to do that. But the problem is, with somebody like Sean Strickland, the way that he grew up, and even DC mentions it, no one ever loved this guy until he was in a gym full of guys that shared a certain brotherhood. And then after that, he became this guy that understood the world from a bigger spectrum point of view. Coming from a Southern California neo-Nazi into a guy that literally believes in brotherhood amongst men in combat. A universal theme that we as men, no matter what race, religion, 
creed or ethnicity can relate to. But his views on Islam, I'm going to challenge it right now. I think they're completely wrong. I think that there are women in Islam that choose to wear the hijab based on their fear of God. And here's the thing. I don't know if Sean Strickland believes in any religion or any type of organized way of thinking or anything like that. But I can tell you from an Islamic perspective, I truly believe that perhaps maybe, again, my opinion, Allah knows best. But from an Islamic perspective, I believe that Allah gave a blessing to Sean Strickland. And why is that? Well, because of the fact that this guy came up in a very troubled youth. By the way, no children ever deserve to be abused. No children ever deserve to be exposed to pornography in the way that his dad exposed him at 13 or 14 years old. No kid deserves that. And then another thing, no kid chooses to be who their parents are. And with all these hardships that you go through, at some point, you have to get your break. And this is one of the things that you can really appreciate with Strawn Strickland. But back to the main point at hand, the UFC does not want him to be champion because it is bad for their brand. It doesn't coincide with the inclusive access of mentality that let's say these left-wing liberal companies want to uh, show to the world. Imagine showing Sean Strickland as your world champion. Imagine that. What is that like for a company that is affiliated with Disney Endeavor and all these other uh, Hollywood agents that are within this woke culture that is going on right now? And look, I'm not here to criticize any political point of view. Obviously, you guys know where I stand in terms of Islamic values. That's where I stand with that. But when it comes to the right-wing, left-wing dilemma of America, I mean, I, I'd i have to say that I have a very neutral opinions on those things. And surprisingly, Sean Strickland himself is in a situation where he's basically the same type of guy. He's a libertarian. He doesn't believe in right or left. And I've mentioned this in the last video about Sean Strickland being a working class hero. Okay, he's not a Trump guy. He doesn't believe Trump is a real conservative. He believes that Trump is only a conservative based on the fact that he wants to appease to a voter base that thinks a certain way. And he's right. So I agree with him on that. So there's a lot of things that I agree with with Sean Strickland. And then there's things that I don't. Because Sean Strickland also complains about the feminized uh, domination of Western society against men, yet Islam somehow is not an answer for him in any kind of degree. I mean, the guy is very confused, but you also have to understand Sean Strickland has very loose morals to which, yes, he says that he believes in American values and this and that, but in all honesty, I got to be honest with you guys, national values only have a certain limit that only religion can fulfill the void of. And you got to understand that. Because if you don't, then you're only missing a lot of pieces in understanding true morality beyond this world, beyond the comprehension of just borders and languages. But when it comes to the overall universal theme that we can agree with Sean Strickland. And this is only talking for the hardcore fans because the mainstream normie world, they're not going to accept Sean Strickland no matter how good he is. And from a tactician point of view, we really admire what he was able to do against a decorated striker like Izzy. So that hardcore side of us can appreciate him. But the liberal casual fans, the normies, as I mentioned, will just never understand it. They will never understand the value of his story and the true value of redemption. Because we live in a superficial world where we choose not to believe that anybody is 
capable of change. But they are. And you know what? Guys, I got to tell you. This is one of the most beautiful things that I love about combat sports. Everybody out there has their own different style in how they're going to present MMA. We all talk about the same things, but we all have a different way of going about it. If you're a gambler, well, all you're going to want to hear are the predictions and how the fight is going to play out. And fair play, you want to know who the winners are? I can do that too, but it's not my specialty. My specialty other than, of course, understanding the tactics of the game and then being able to give you a proper prediction on that, is storytelling, public relations, and then on top of that, being able to relate to the public of what is going on within the insides of the sport, in the insides of what is really going on in the mind of these fighters and the real people that are surrounding these athletes in times of when they're, let's say, dealing with their doctors dealing with nutritionists and even USADA agents that are knocking at their door at 5 a.m. in the morning to collect their piss. This is the reality of combat sports that people don't see outside of it. So why is the UFC so threatened by Sean Strickland being champion? Because the majority of the world will never understand anything outside of the superficial value of the fact that he was uh, neo-Nazi and the fact that he says these things about women and the fact that he says these things about immigration and the fact that he says these things about Muslims it's just never going to fly and that is why the UFC is going to work night and day to try to topple him while he is the champion and the undisputed champion of the world right now but only Allah knows best <laughs>